Anyhow, we're going to move on. This morning, this is not your conventional way of learning, but how about using comics to teach children about science? An author says it's not as impossible as you would imagine because cartoons can bring to life complex concepts. We're going to find out how in just about 15 minutes' time. But uh, coming up, what do we have? A new method that could revolutionize science teaching. We'll find out more about it after the break. Welcome back. Now, parents and educators are always on the lookout for new teaching methods to help children get interested in science. And believe it or not, comics might be an answer. Our next guest has been using cartoon bunnies to help students understand complex concepts in physics, chemistry and biology. And he's none other than Otto Fong, author of Sir Fong's Adventures in Science. He was in our studios recently to tell us how he got started. I was a science teacher for eight years in uh, one of our top schools in Singapore and um, I, my students love to see me draw comics and then whenever um, uh, I have an idea uh, or a concept that I want to teach I would try to add comics to it and then uh, that would entertain them and at the same time it, would, it actually helps them remember the concepts better uh -huh. and then that's when I have the idea why don't I make a comic book out of that mm. Mm. I guess we do sort of understand and learn better when we can see something or give it uh, uh, maybe something we can relate to it. I guess because it science fun. is so, mm. it's so, if you talk about cells mm. and atoms mm. and it's like, I, I can't grasp it. I don't know what it's like, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with textbooks and with, with teaching because in, in school, we're, we're concerned with uh, scoring marks and, and passing the next level. Uh -huh. But then afterwards, right, then you ask most of the students, they go like, well, I've returned it to the teachers. <laughs> and it's very insulting because, you know, I want them to more, do more than just, just score. Right. So, which is why I think it's very important to actually give them something that they love, uh -huh. that they can remember easily, and at the same time, they enjoy. And that, that involves humour, uh, story, and cute characters. So, I suppose what you're trying to do here is just to inject fun into the subject so they'll be inspired, not really to replace the textbooks, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely not to replace a textbook because, you know, comic cannot replace textbook. Uh, the, textbook uh, you know, the textbook does uh, a certain function very well. Mm -hmm. But comics, what it does is it makes people want to know more. Right. For example, in Japan, right, uh, Doraemon. Uh, if you look at Doraemon, it's about a robotic cat mm -hmm. and his best friend. And then if you look at Japan now, like 20 years, 30 years later, we, they, they are the leading, leading uh, research center for robotics. Right. And where does that come from? It came from Astro Boys, came from Dora Emon. Right, inspiring right. the young ones into that field, I suppose. Well, you've got a whiteboard and you're going to demonstrate to us how exactly comics is used to illustrate these scientific concepts. Sometimes it can be pretty complicated. Do you want yeah, to show it to Yeah, just a quick lesson yeah. on, I don't know, something. <laughs> okay. okay. What is your favourite scientific topic of today? Well, today, today we're going to talk about bonding, ionic bonding, mm -hmm. uh -huh. which is kind of like a chemistry topic. And uh, the thing about comics is you usually, usually have two frames. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, this is, this is a chlorine atom. And she's kind of lonely and feeling incomplete because she has only one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven electrons. Okay. So in order for her to feel complete, she needs one more electron. And thereby came this really handsome and debonair mm, <laughs> sodium <laughs> atom. And he talked her into accepting his lone electron uh -huh. and she said yes so in the end what we have is a very happy couple and now our dear chlorine has a complete set of eight electrons and our sodium atom is happily and proudly bonded to her and there, uh -huh. there we go. That's, that's your ionic bonding there. Okay, you know, yeah, it certainly makes, makes it unforgettable. <laughs> well, that, that could be where the term, uh, you complete me, came yeah. from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Tom Cruise might have taken a line on that. Yeah. Well, tell us some of the other things you cover. I mean, for example, I'm looking at this book here. Mm. It says it's a book on uh, cells. I guess, is this for the, the, the kid who has no idea what cells are, or should he have at least a bit of knowledge what cells are, I mean, when they start reading a, a, this book? Well, um, I think it's a little bit for both. I started off as a very, very basic, because if you don't understand cells, mm. uh, you won't, won't be able to learn anything else about biology. 
So, you know, cells are basically like the ba basic Lego bricks of it. So kids learn that. And then from then on, if they're interested, they can learn more about it. But even if they don't understand what exactly cells are, mm -hmm. they can still enjoy the story because it's really entertaining and mm -hmm. it's really full of fun and a lot of jokes mm -hmm. in there. So what is the process like for you? I mean, you sit down there, you have a concept and you're thinking, how do I illustrate this in comic? Or does it come naturally to you? Because, you know, it's, it's not easy to think of how you want to express it in a comical way. Mm. Oh dear, this, this, it, sometimes inspiration just comes, especially uh -huh. when you're interacting with the students. And uh, I think for, for teachers, we, we learn to uh, observe the teachable moments. Mm -hmm. And usually the teachable moment comes in the form of a, a confrontation where students do something that you don't expect mm -hmm. and you're caught, caught like, oh my god, oh, what god. am I going to do? Yeah. And the students go like, oh, oh, I'm so bored with this, this topic here. <laughs> uh, can you draw something? And that's usually when, when, when I think on the spot uh -huh. and then I think about uh, how to... Just curious, why are bunnies so yeah. prominently featured in your books? Well, because I was, uh, my, the first year as a teacher, I was given this, this form class and they're, they're all, you know, sec one students, uh -huh. uh, I think 13 years old, and they all look up at me and, so now what? <laughs> I was like, and then they proceeded to give me hell for the next uh, almost a year, whereby I was a new teacher, I'm clueless, mm -hmm. and I was trying to, you know, oh, well, you follow my instructions. But those are really smart students, they don't take it lying down, mm. uh, and they are born in the year of the rabbit. I see. Oh, just a re <laughs> reminded to yourself of what the the best, <laughs> yeah, in They may be That's cute, right. but they bite. <laughs> Just like many other That's good. I mean, they're well. trying to learn, so mm -hmm. it's good that they're, you know, um, aggressive in that sense when it comes to um, studying. So, is it only science? Is it are the topics all science related? At the moment, uh, because I'm one person, so therefore mm -hmm. it will be science for me, and I'm a science teacher, so it's uh -huh. easier that way. But I also know that uh, another friend of mine who is an ex-Chinese teacher, and anyone can tell you, right? Chinese teachers are, are, are the ones that's having the worst time because it's like trying to get the students to like learn Chinese. It's like, Forget it. Right. But the thing is, this, this ex-teacher actually drew a comic ba uh, for, for teaching Chinese. And if you go to schools right, and you mention his character, this uh, Xiao Pai Long, mm. uh, all the kids go like, Wah! And it's like, huh? You're talking about Chinese here. Mm. Right. Mm. So yeah, uh, ch comics can be very effective in, in, in s uh, several kind of topics. I'm, I'm thinking of doing maths next. Right, right. Wow, okay. that would be quite a challenge though, I mean, to explain the formulas and X, Y, Z and then you put it into comic. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to dig into the Pythagoras theorems and those <laughs> things. Well, that's just it. How we detailed can luck. you get? Because it's, yeah. it's hard to go too technical or too detailed into some of the... Uh, I mean, if we had gone be beyond the uh, neutrons or, or what you just taught us into a more, the next, Deeper. I don't know, three phases down, mm. it's a bit hard to, to put into pictures and... It's a very good question. I mean, how deep do I want to get? So, so th that, that goes back to what I really want to do. What I really want to do is to get kids really excited and inspired to keep on learning. I don't want to explain the entire textbooks to them. So therefore, all I need to do is to light that spark of interest, that mm -hmm. passion, and then the, they, they'll take care of the rest. Mm. Now I know maybe why I wasn't so good in my science subjects. Yeah. I didn't have that exposure to, you know, such comics. I guess that the key is here, what he's trying to say is that, mm. that, you know, as kids, you need to enjoy what you're learning. A lot of times mm. we, we, we feel like we're almost being forced to learn something. So mm. there's no real interest. But once you develop an interest, then, you know, it's fine. Then you can actually learn on your own. Anyway, that was uh, the funky comic writer, Otto Fong, on why comics can be effective tools to teach children science. If you want to check out more of his works, he'll be at the Singapore Toy Games and Comic Convention, which opens this weekend at the Suntec Convention Centre. Details on screen right now.